presentation online. I'm going to download that. The server is down. Your server? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it's not on your <coughs> the presentation. Yeah. It's not local. Uh, yeah. It's pretty high this year from what I read on the interwebs. It takes time, then you can start it for the first thing. Yeah, uh, I can do that. I have one presentation on radio. The other one is that uh, acronym I was talking about. <coughs> IP config, IP renew. Take pictures of incense. <coughs> Make a wall. Can someone just check in uh, there? We still get a check on Prezi. Such in PA and PRY. You should go faster. Nice. Prezi's slow. Yeah, Prezi's just slow today. 
Okay. It's just cool. not yours. <laughs> yeah, it's not yours. <laughs> okay. So Spaghetti crisis. Do you have one? I'm going to open this up and put it in the trash. So that it becomes way out. You're a good citizen of the earth. Except that they incinerate the trash and then. <laughs> So he tried. By the time they incinerate the trash, the bugs life would have, have gone its way. Uh, I don't know how long Professor Fizz is going to be on the phone. It sounds like he's about to go. Are you different on the camera? Yes. Is it streaming now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. We're all here. Who's <laughs> All here? Who's your friend? This is. Yeah. Oh, David. Sorry. You're, you're blocking me. Okay. So it's full house. Yes. Yeah. Full house is going to be this summer. Yeah. This is the maximum speed. Okay. Uh, good morning and uh, namaste. From India. India. My name is Sachin Dantri. Uh, I am a assistant professor from Jain University, Bangalore. I handle the Department of Journalism and Media Studies. And uh, I have been uh, also working with Radio Industry. I was with Radio Mix for a couple of uh, years. And then uh, also with Radio One. I interned with Radio One. Uh, during the entire uh, session as, a, as an intern, I found that uh, there are a lot of things about radio that is not being taught to a radio person. And when I entered the radio industry, I felt that you know, those things were really important for every radio professional to hone up his skills. And most of them would lack those skills. Some basic things which will uh, you know, help you in the longer run. After a point, people stagnate in radio or in the media industry. It happens because they don't know the basics. You know, They don't have the basics strong. So hence, I started devising a small kind of a course for the new recruits and the new interns, whatever would join radio. Slowly, I started teaching it in different, different colleges. And today, after almost four years of uh, evolution, yeah, today the course is called as Radio Giri. In India, Radio Giri means it's kind of like a, you know, a kind of a cult. Like Gandhi Giri means being very nice or being non-violent. I coined a brand uh, called Radio Giri. It's quite popular in Bangalore though. And I want to take it, uh, uh, you know, uh, bigger and larger. And luckily, I was opportunity to come and teach in NYIT uh, campus. and. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys are here and being a part of my first international session. So I'll start off with seven basic elements which are uh, you know necessary for us to understand about radio, which are always overlooked by most radio people. They're like, yeah, I know radio is all about talking or holding the mic and being nice and being funny. But there's a lot of other small intricate details which are very really essential. So I will start off with something called as the elements of radio, the basic elements of radio. Yeah. <coughs> now. Uh, I would like to give you a nice analogy. Yeah, uh, how many of you know to cook or prepare tea? Yeah, I think all of us know, right? And I'm going to use the analogy of tea because uh, I, for two reasons: a, I love tea. I'm quite sure a lot of us uh, like tea. B, and most important reason is uh, recently our prime minister was a tea seller, and he's become from from a very humble beginning. Uh, he's become a prime minister of the country, and uh, he's uh, you know uh, everybody's talking about him. I think uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. These are two main reasons why I would like to take the example of tea. <clears throat> now, when you prepare tea, what are the four uh, main ingredients do you require? Water. Water. Sugar. Sugar. Mm. Milk. Tea. Exactly. Yeah. yeah? The uh, sugar and, and tea. Now, if any, uh, imagine if you don't have any one of these things, will there be a complete tea? Mm. Right? We need these four ingredients to start to have a good cup of tea. Right or wrong? And similarly, we have uh, four ingredients in radio, which is very essential. And using these four, we can have a wonderful radio program. And if you use this effectively, what happens? You end up getting a very good audi audience, and the audience are connecting with you. That's the most important thing. Your target audience start connecting with you. Yes, there are sometimes you know we have radio shows which do not understand all the radio producers do not understand all these elements, and they just do some sh shows without giving equal importance to all these elements. But once you understand the importance of these elements, that's when you can have a very, very uh, productive or convincing show. The first and foremost is music. Yeah, Music is very important for any radio show because it puts or sets the mood in that particular 
uh, you know, uh, situation. Now imagine if there is a very dull moment. You can have a violin playing behind and it kind of put you in that morose mood or dull mood. You can't have a very peppy music at that, right? Imagine if you talk, you're doing a radio play and you have to talk about something really, uh, you know, there's a death or there's some, there's some mourning happening. You can't use something really fast. Similarly, if you're going in, a, you know, if you're showing something really happy or somebody, there's a marriage, we'll have a very, uh, we probably have a guitar or some other kind of a music, which kind of brings an element. So we need to use this, uh, use music, the right music to set in the right mood. mood. And automatically, the listener starts experiencing the same thing yeah, when he's listening to a radio show. That's another important thing about, uh, important element of radio. And the second thing is words. The most, uh, uh, you know, commonly used uh, element of any radio show. A lot of people use, uh, you know, words in the sense, it could be phrases, sentences, paragraphs, or whatever. So now words also make a very important, uh, uh, you know, part in, they play a very important part in communicating what the RJ or the anchor is trying to convey. So we need to choose the right words. We can't just, you know, have, be, you know, have too many words and, you know, sometimes we can uh, turn off the um, listener. So we need to have the right amount of words with the right script. That's where the element of script comes into place. We, we, we directly start, start, start off with writing scripts, but we have to understand the importance of words first. And that is when you can evolve and then use it into, use the right words for the right uh, you know show. Yeah. Sometimes you know uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, words also include something called as an accent. Now imagine if I'm doing a show in Northern America, I can't have a Southern accent. It doesn't connect to the people. There's a different accent in Northern America. Southern America is something else. There's also some there's the different language uh, slangs they use. So I cannot really connect with the audience with the same slang. So we need to have the right words for the right show and for the right. Uh, a region that you're uh, catering to, fine. And the third thing is sound effects. Sound effects play a very important uh, role in radio because, uh, like I say, uh, radio is a theater of the mind. Yeah, everything runs in your mind. Now, if you have the right sound effect, what happens then? You get that particular feel. Now, imagine uh, you know there is. I, I want to depict uh, you know a murder. Yeah. Now, how will I depict that? Now I can probably have footsteps moving slowly. Now you can just imagine if there's only a radio, there's only audio coming coming for you guys. Now how do I depict that? I can show footsteps slowly. The footsteps start uh, <coughs> moving faster, and slow, it start really, really, you know, start, start pacing up. Then finally, you know, a woman screams. At the end of it, you'll be wondering what happened. Now there are various versions of this. She could be killed, or she could have been, uh, you know, uh, threatened by a ghost, or probably she was just hallucinating something. But sound effects make a very big, very big uh, impact on uh, any radio show. Now, imagine if I'm having a uh, you know a contest on radio, and if, imagine you know uh, Professor Herb won a won a prize. Now, when I when I when I have to give that prize to him, I can't just have it have, have it very dry. I have to put some you know applause. That sound effects is there, right? So what happens? Even the listener will be like, oh my God, Professor Herb is so lucky. Yeah, he's got this prize, and uh, you know I want to be there too. So probably tomorrow he will try more or you know try harder to be on the show because he sees the excitement that is there on radio and he's like you know what i want to win that prize too and i want to be on the show so all these things uh, really make, make a lot of difference the sound effects really make a lot of difference and there are a lot of other things sometimes you you have a uh, you you have a very um, funny you have a very a funny statement you have to add probably a you know small sound effect with something like a, a you know a ting or toying or something like that it automatically brings a smile on your face or some kind of a trumpet, you know, when you're making, when somebody is making fool of someone, you can have a small trumpet, you know, and it, it, it kind of brings in, uh, you know, that uh, idea of uh, foolishness or stupidity for the listener, and you may probably find how lame kind of a, that kind of an expression. Mm -hmm. So that's another, that's the third important ingredient. The last and the most important ingredient is mm -hmm. silence. Mm -hmm. Silence is always underestimated in radio because uh, a two second silence means something else, a four second silence means something else. So the right amount of silence is required for us to convey a particular, uh, uh, you know, emotion. Now imagine if I'm 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 playing a, you know, I'm driving. You know, imagine imagine you know, there's a radio show going on. I'm driving and I have a sound effect of the car screeching and probably even the music playing. And suddenly, you know, there's this crash sound. And I say, oh. Now, if you're if you're a radio listener, you'll be wondering hey, what's happening. I'm giving a two or three second silence. You'll be like, okay. And suddenly, if I come back, say, oh my God, nothing happened much. Then you go, okay, he's all right. If it goes longer, you start uh, feeling that okay, this guy is dead or he must be badly wounded. So silence plays a very important uh, role when it comes to uh, you know uh, making radio shows. 
So uh, and that's how. And, and the longer the silence, the more the suspense, or the more uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, we, we expect something even worse to happen for that particular uh, protagonist in that particular radio show. So these are the four main ingredients. If we use them uh, judiciously, we'll have a very good radio show. Uh, can I move to the next topic, or do you have any questions around? Uh, you know, just um, yeah. one question: The yeah. uh, are you focusing on all radio shows, meaning entertainment, news, sports, uh, or are you focusing on? Yeah, you're focusing yeah. on everything. Okay. We can use. Uh, we don't have to use all the four, but if we use them judiciously, we can have a wonderful. Show. Imagine if you're having a show on uh, sports. Yeah, we can have a commentary, you know, a commentary going behind, and also the crowd, you know, cheering with them. So what happens? Gives you that entire feel over that. And suddenly, imagine there's a, there's, there's a two, uh, you know, the the, the the scores are tied, and then the last person is going, you know, imagine if you're going, you know, somebody's going to dunk the ball into it, and there's total silence. The entire audience who's listening to it, you be wondering, oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? And suddenly, you can have a applause and say, oh, it's a, you know, uh, it's it's a uh, what, what do you say? Two, two or three or whatever, yeah. And then suddenly, you know, like the kind of enthusiasm the, the listeners have at in those two, three seconds of you know, heart starts pacing, yeah. The one who's supporting the team will be like, oh my god, I hope it, you know, uh, you know, there is a basket. The one with the opposing team will be like, oh my god, god, please. They can pray to God in those three seconds, hoping that the ball falls off somewhere else. So that way, you can use silence and all the sound effects. See, all the four can be used. Even the music, you know, like after after they win, you can have an amazing music behind that. Saying, yeah, you know, uh, you know, LA Lakers won this game, or whatever, something like that. So you use these things judiciously, the listeners will really enjoy the entire show. Yeah, that is that's how you use this. Yeah. Any other so questions? You're saying by the use of silence, you get the audience to participate more because they become more emotionally involved, exactly. and more emotionally attached. Yeah. So they're more involved with the show, and that's better. Yeah. And so what's the difference between the, 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 the notion of dead air and silence? Sometimes the, the, the <coughs> See, uh, dead air is something when tec uh, that technically something goes wrong. Yeah, that is something uh, unavoidable. Here I'm telling we are purposely inducing the silence there to uh, you know, take some kind of uh, uh, you know, effect into our program. But dead air is something that happens te 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 uh, technically. You know, probably your wires goes off. The wire goes off, or your. Uh, how do you? How does you? How does the audience differentiate between that air and the silence that we are? Uh, that context? is. See, uh, it's very. Uh, what do you say? It's a very difficult thing. Sometimes, if it goes on too long, probably they may just switch off. Yeah. So, uh, I would rather say use silence in such a way that it's not too long. Also, because if they think it's a dead air, they may probably switch off to another station. Yeah. So. I, I think we should use the right uh, right amount of time when you're using silence. Otherwise, like you said, they'll think it's a dead air, and the worst thing that can happen to a station is they tune off and we lose our listener. Right. So I think that's the that's the way you need to manage. So I think uh, it's more or less how you use it. But if it happens in uh, you know eventually without our uh, without our control, then well, that uh, can't do anything. It's not in our hands. So it does happen. So. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> the next thing that we need to focus on is the basic parameters of a radio station. Yeah, a lot of us enter a radio station thinking, you know, it's all about RJing, it's all about anchoring, it's all about music. Yeah, it's it's all about you know, like there's a there's a very fancy name for that particular station, and we want to be a part of that. But a lot of thought goes behind behind every radio station. There is a there's a team, you know. Of the marketing, you know, people who are uh, devising a radio station for a particular, you know, set of people having a long-term goal for it, not just that they want to start a radio station. There are certain, there are four parameters for that. First and foremost, uh, foremost is the format. That is something that we need to keep in mind. Without the format, we will not know what kind of radio stations we are in. A lot of us say it's a music station. A lot of us say it's some kind of a talk radio or something like that. But there are four or five primary uh, formats. The most prominent one is the music format. Under music format, it is CHR, Contemporary Hit Radio. That is any song that has been released in the last six months. Those songs are considered to be more popular uh, among among the youngsters or among people. Once you know, why, why do we keep a gap of six months? Because new songs come and uh, we have a habit of listening to the same song again and again, and then we get bored of it. 
as our new song comes and then we move on to that. But that is how the um, the entire radio industry runs, or probably even the music channels or television also runs. They basically run CHR, contemporary hit radio, and uh, that is that, that is the first format, and it it comes under um, you know era based. There are basic there are different different era. CHR is the contemporary music. Then there is something known as uh, classics. There is something known as uh, uh, you know uh, old uh, you know uh, R and B. And there is um, uh, also blue. These are all era based. Blues are all before 60s. Then the rock is uh, rock music started when you know probably in the, in the early 60s and was there till the late 90s. And now it is more or less pop or R and B. Uh, you know house those kind of things. These are all the different different uh, things based on the uh, age uh, based on the era. There is also another format under music is that uh, format of the genre. The genre is basically the type of music. Under this rock, uh, there can be one station that plays only rock music. They can have music from the 50s till the last week or for the re recent uh, album that was, that was released. They all come under under the r rock music. Then there is pop. We can have pop stars, uh, you know, probably from, from Michael Jackson, he is the one who popularized uh, pop. Till the recent Britney Spears or Justin Bieber or uh, yeah Justin Bieber I think he's quite popular right now all those people come under the pop then we have various such things uh, you know there is uh, there is R&B there is um, rap so th that's another uh, uh, format that, that that people follow under this uh, these are all the uh, formats that you get under music then you have something more serious that is news where you have where you get uh, constantly you get bombarded with news from different parts of the world or different parts of America whichever country you are living in so now under that it's serious stuff current affairs they probably even divide that into you know politic, uh, politics and sports then there is something called as local news and there is regional news and there is international news all those things are there that comes under news uh, news based formats yeah and uh, there are some uh, stations like bbc which have an international appeal so they they cater to an international audience even sometimes even cnn has got certain uh, channels but bbc is one of the most prominent uh, uh, international radio channel basically for news yeah that is th that is the first thing we need to, de uh, to decide when we are starting a radio station imagine if tomorrow you know one of us decide to start a radio station we need to get the format right we need to get the format right and then once we get the format right we need to work on the content that we are giving that is the next parameter we need to keep in mind now if you, go, you got the format right now what, what do I mean by content now imagine let me take uh, for example a news channel I am starting now in, uh, in America there are two different uh, political uh, uh, you know, ideologies, one of the Democrats and the other one is the Republican. Now you can choose to have pro-Democrat uh, content or you can choose to have pro-Republican content. So you can choose what content you want to give. Sometimes uh, uh, there, there, there can also be something that uh, a different kind of, uh, uh, that, that is basically a content under news. Now the, the other kind of content is you only want to give a sports news, you have a sports channel. Under that, you can have only NFL. Yeah, you can have one radio channel only for NFL because there are a lot of people who follow that. Another one is only for um, you know uh, basketball. Uh, another another for content only for baseball. So you can have such kind of content. Uh, you know, you can streamline content in these particular uh, sports. So that is about content because at the end of the day, you know, you are reaching a particular audience. Yeah. So, or, or a particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, game. So you need to make sure that you give the right content to the right people. <coughs> content is a, the, the second most important thing when you're starting off a radio station. Another pa parameter. The third thing is an identity that you have for a radio station. Like, um, you know, I'll give you an example. I'm not very aware about the stations in uh, the U.S. Though I can give you an uh, example in back in uh, India, Radio Mirchi. Radio Mirchi. I think the word Mirchi means spicy. I think anyone who has had the Indian food will know what mirchi is. Something that is very spicy. So the the <coughs> radio mirchi means something very spicy, something very interesting, something very hot. So the identity is that they are very uh, you know uh, contemporary. They're very hip and happening. They're very bright. They're very intelligent. And their identity is also to do with the uh, you know the most uh, happening kind of a uh, crowd. That that's what they're trying to look at. That is their identity. And even if you look at their logo, it's a it's a big uh, what do you say, chili, a red chili with a blue or the twig in the end, and then there's a yellow background. 
Yeah. So the identity, the moment you know a youngster look, looks at it and they're like, wow, looks awesome. I think I would love to listen to this particular show. They would rather uh, identify themselves with that particular identity of the radio station. Sometimes uh, there are some stations who have this, uh, you know, flashy colors. You may get attracted to those, those colors than by the content or format. You may just, like, I think I love that station because it's very uh, exciting to watch. Or that particular, uh, you know, uh, the logo looks very good. So all these things are psychological, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're all the things uh, are, are mind, uh, you know, subconscious mind listens to and it's not getting attracted to these particular radio stations. And the last and the most important thing. Can you yeah. spell uh, radio with you please? M-I-R-C-H-I. You can go on their website and take a look at that. Yeah, uh, 98.3 FM. Oh, it's in America? No, it's in, uh, it's in India. It's in India and now they've moved to uh, the, Middle, the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Thank you. Okay. The last thing is target audience. See, at the end of the day, our radio is for a target audience. Because we cater to them, we reach to them, and they consume our product. And remember one thing, they may be consuming our product, but actually we are giving them also advertisements. They consume our advertisements and they go and purchase those items and that's when we get back the money in sales. So at the end of the day, that's the cycle that we follow in any media house and specifically in radio, it's a target audience that matters. Now imagine if my target audience, uh, 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 you know, target audience is age group between 18 to 35. They are the most potent the people who buy a lot of uh, things without thinking twice. Once you you know uh, move over 35, you realize that you have to save, you have to have insurance, you have to have some kind of, uh, you have to invest on you know probably buy a car, different different kind of things. So you need to have a target audience right. If you get a target audience right, you end up getting enough number of people listening to your show, and based on the number of people listening to your show, you can also hike up your advertisements. Now uh, imagine if Levi's wants to put an advertisement. And one of your radio stations has got highest number of listenership between 18 to 35. That Levi's will choose your station because there's so many people at that particular age group who are listening to your station and they're the ones who will buy this kind of jeans. But once you hit 35 and above, you'd rather go in for a docker's pant or probably a formal pant. But till then, you probably spend more on jeans and t-shirts. So your target audience really matters. If you get the target audience right, the, all the four things has to fix, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, all the four things has to fit in properly, then you have a very, uh, what do you say, convincing radio station and a very, uh, what do you say, popular radio station, at the end of it, you also make a lot of money. So these four parameters, if you get this thing right, you have a very successful radio station and that's when your cash register starts ringing. Yeah. So target audience, at the end of the day, the first three things is needed for the target audience. If you get these three three things right, based on the target audience, you start making your money and you start making, getting your uh, sponsors and or advertisers, whatever. These are the four important things. Any questions? And uh, why it is important? Because according to them, you need to come, come up with your uh, content. Yeah, because I, I remember recently, uh, we started using a lot of uh, hashtags in our uh, radio shows. We say, you know what, if you have, if you have some kind of uh, uh, feedback on this particular thing, go on Facebook and take this hashtag and get in touch with me. Now, the target audience currently, we realize that are not preferring sending SMSs or uh, you know sending us emails or even coming on Facebook. They prefer to use hashtags and that's how they communicate. So it's even faster. So we need to uh, upgrade ourselves regularly and cater to them. That's very important for us. Yeah. Are they uh, contacting the radio station ID, I guess, uh, in social media, or are they contacting the people that are on the show directly? See, it depends on two things. <clears throat> Imagine if you're you're the uh, you know the anchor of the particular show, and you said something, and they have something to ask you, so they will directly probably uh, you know uh, interact with you. Or sometimes imagine you have, you have said something and. Uh, and that has really appealed a lot of people and they want to actually even thank you and also thank the radio station. So they may send an email even to the uh, station head, station director, it, it happens anyway. Or sometimes maybe you know they are not happy with something that's happening on, on your show. That way also they can come uh, you know tell you that look we didn't like this. Or they want to inform and imagine if you don't reply back or give a convincing answer. They would say I will I'll go to the uh, uh, you know, higher up authority and tell them about this particular thing. 
that's how it is. Um, and are they using uh, the, the the hosts uh, that are on the shows? Are they using their their personal social media accounts, or are they using one that's specific to the radio station? See, uh, it depends case to case. But I, as a media person, I prefer that they have a uh, account for that particular radio station. You know, it, it becomes easier because uh, the primary reason is that imagine if tomorrow that person leaves that place, yeah, and if he leaves a vacuum of listeners or you know. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of interaction will get uh, now. We will take all the listeners to another station, so it's better from the uh, station's point of view to have a designated uh, a Facebook account or a social media account for that particular uh, radio station. <laughs> oh, for the for the host, though, specifically. For the host, yeah. See, a lot of them do have their own account, and they, the moment they move to another station, they take all the. So it depends, you know, like it's a double-edged sword. If you're smart, imagine if you're an uh, anchor. If you're smart, you'll keep it in your name. Yeah, but imagine if I'm the you know station manager, I'll say, hey, you know what, Tony, uh, why don't you just make it as uh, our station, you know, make it Globesville and say, because I know that if tomorrow something goes on, you move out, you take all Globesville listeners with you when you move out. So that's how it works. It's how you choose, uh, how you maneuver your management. If you can convince them, you can get it. Right. Question about the uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, all that money coming in. Yeah. I'm just curious if you could say the range of viewers, of listeners rather, yeah. how many listeners you would expect to have at what times of the day, mm -hmm. and how much the station charges for advertising and the difference, like if it's in the middle of the night, how much is it, and if it's mm -hmm. prime time, drive time, how much is it? Uh, it? You mean to say how do they charge? How many people would listen to the station? Okay. Typically, you have a thousand listeners. Do you have a hundred thousand listeners? Do you have ten million listeners? Okay. And what would let's say a thirty-second spot be in the middle of the night when nobody's listening in in the prime time when there's a lot of people listening? Well, I, uh, I in cannot American dollars. <laughs> in Indian in India or uh, yeah yeah your yeah. Particular station. Okay. See, uh, actually, I can uh, you know answer your question with the next uh, topic. Okay. So I will I will start up the next topic and then I'll answer sure. your question. Now, uh, what you said is very pertinent to this particular slide that I'm going to talk about. It's called as day party. Yeah, this is another important thing that every uh, radio professional has to understand. Even a television professional will understand this. Basically, day party means you divide the number of hours that is that is on air, on air into parts. That are day parts. You divide it in such a way that uh, you know. At that particular hour, a certain particular set of people are listening. Now, I'll give you an example. So the first thing is, morning, we all leave to our work or college. You know, we leave by probably nine o'clock, and we have a one hour or two hour drive. So basically, that that's called as a drive time. And primarily, our listeners are driving. So they are doing two or three things at the same time. They're driving, yeah, and they're also having some kind of entertainment through your radio. Now that is a very that, that's called as a drive time show. There is maximum listenership in that. What part of India is this? Radio, is is your station? Uh, this pan India. It's the whole, all of India. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. not just like yeah. a city and specific yeah, to that yeah, city. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is 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 your your most people listen to it in the is this the general average over yeah. the, all of India, not not, in, not, only, not regionally. Not on, not India. I'm talking about globally. This globally. departing is globally. Okay, you, oh, you're talking globally now. Globally. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, that's how uh, even we have uh, incorporated whatever uh, America has uh, used. We have taken that and made it Indianized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, uh, see, the trend of radio usage was primarily from America. I think from the time of World War, I think the entire country was, uh, the World War II, uh, World War One, and the Depression time, the entire country, the only source of uh, entertainment was radio. I think a lot of people even at, at home they would actually sit and watch the radio. There are some really interesting photos you can Google it up. It's really interesting how America has actually been the cradle of uh, radio. Today the whole world is using it, but primarily it is America. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you look at that, that's how it started off, and then slowly they started making smaller. Uh, you know, uh, t first it was actually a vacuum, uh, you know, uh, pipe or something, bulb or something like that. It was too huge, so they couldn't. Uh, you know, there's very huge. Slowly they came up with transmitters. Those transmitters made the radio very small. Transistors. transistors, sorry. Transistors, they made it really small and then they started putting it in the car. And a lot of Americans like to drive, right? So that's when the whole concept of drive time came. 
concept of drive time. The drive time is basically when you're going to work, probably 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock, and probably back from 6 to 9. And uh, you know, if you look at it right now, a lot of people come from the suburbs and they come to the city. So they travel quite a long distance. And the only entertainment they have is radio. Yeah. So that's how the whole concept of drive time came into picture. The same thing was replicated world over. Probably everybody realized that that is where the target audience is and that's where the money is. So of course there's a research done and there's something, you know, I think AC Nielsen in uh, America does uh, the research for all these things. Yes, Arbitron. Arbitron, yeah, yeah, uh, Arbitron. Yeah, AC Nielsen's for TV. Yeah, TV, correct. So they do the research uh, and they have something called as a people meter. Uh, it's a small thing they put it in your watch or in your mobile phone nowadays and whenever you listen to the radio it picks the frequency what time you, you, you enter this particular station what time you exit it all those data is captured in the small chip and every month they come and take the chip and they uh, take data out of it and then they give you the uh, you know the date you know, they give you the data of how many people are listening that's how they estimate the number of listeners yeah. Can I just elaborate on that? Just sure, sure. Around? Yeah, this is something we covered in new technologies class. Every music now has hidden tones in it that say where it came from. So if you walk into a department store, the music is actually what's called source identified. The music is, has code in it that says where it is, where it's coming from, and what day and time it is. So if you followed someone around throughout the day and listened to everything that they heard, every music they heard, you'd know everywhere that they went, what station they were listening to. So in effect, that's being recorded. You're in your car and you're hearing the news radio. You go into a department store. You go in the elevator. It's quite creepy. Okay. <laughs> right? Get into so it's, it's done because it's not to capture the frequency. They actually hide tones in the, in the sound. And every radio station participates because they want to get that arbitron yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's how technology is yeah. you know, creeping into our lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, so what what we have, what we usually do is day party. Now the drive time show is the morning and the evening show. When you're going to work or coming back from work, and you're you're in the, you're in the car or in your you know with your iPod or something like that, you're listening to radio. You're coming back home. That's where the maximum you know money is spent on advertising. And usually we have different different uh, day parts. Uh, usually with morning drive is probably between 8 to 10, 30, 11 and then you have the 11 to 2 band uh, which is primarily for uh, women and for probably you know who are homemakers I would rather say homemakers or probably who are in shops who are listening to radio. So for them is a different kind of content that's provided. So we, we particularly we, we make those day parts such a way that uh, based on the listeners we make that particular day part. Now imagine at the 11 to 2 hour I play at uh, 2 hour I play really hard hitting rock music. Women sometimes do not really enjoy it. Who are above, you know, 35 plus, they have a family or they have work to do or they are busy doing something else. So at that point of time, we give a different kind of a music or different kind of content. So day parts in that way, we, we arrange our day parts based on our target audience. Now it depends, you know. It, see, in, in in New York, it is different because uh, the the days are longer and people work for for longer hours. Probably in the suburbs or probably in you know uh, you know the Midwest or something like that. People get back home fast, probably it's just a half an hour drive. So there, they, they tweak the day parts according to the particular uh, culture of the particular city. Basically, you, you do day parting based on the particular the culture of the city, how the city lives. So that's how you, you get it. Like uh, Bombay is a very fast moving uh, city. So we have longer uh, you know, drive shows. Bangalore is relatively slow. Yeah, It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very calm city, so we, the drive time is a little shorter. So that's how we assess. So day party makes a very important uh, uh, day, part, day party is very important because we understand our audience uh, who are listening and according to their mindset we give them content for that. So that's why it is very important for us to get the day party right. If you get the day party wrong and you, you you're targeting the wrong audience and giving them the wrong content, you're in a, you know you, you're not you know you're just shooting in the dark. And even the advertisers, you know, imagine if somebody wants to uh, let me give you an example, eleven to two. Uh, you want to have uh, an advertisement about uh, a skin cream, yeah, and uh, that is the right time, 11 to 2, to put that particular advertisement, not in the early morning. A lot of lot of women will not watch it or, or listen to it. And 2 to 5 or 2 to 6 is the right time to have, uh, you know, jeans or Coke or McDonald's, those kind of ads, because youngsters are listening to radio at that point of time. Then again, if you want to talk about insurance or financial policies or some kind of legal advice, 
the morning drive and the evening drive are the best because men and working people, working women, everybody is listening to that particular show. So they will be like, oh my god, you know what, my insurance is expiring. I think I should go for State Farm or probably Geico or whatever. So that's how you target your audience according to the day parts. If you get your day parts right, and if you get the right advertising for that particular day part, that's when the you know, money comes. And in India, we are charging in, in cities like Mumbai, we charge around two to three thousand rupees in the prime. That is the uh, you know drive time show. And how many hours is that? That would be around. Yeah, how, much? Uh, how much? How much? <laughs> around three dollars for ten seconds. What is it? Three thousand divided by sixty. Yeah, because one uh, one dollar is like sixty rupees. Sixty rupees, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh, Three dollars ten seconds. So yeah, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Five thousand. Yeah, and uh, like you said, what about the cost for late night shows? See, we have this concept, uh, you know, in the media industry, we say something called as a value add. Uh, what happens, you know, the customer will be like, hey, you know what, make it $45 and make it $40. Now, we will say, look, let us keep it $40, $50, but I will give you free rotations in the night show. Because anyway, you know, there's not much uh, listenership. And he'll say, look, I'm giving you extra minutes for that. So that's how they manipulate the whole thing and negotiate with them. Or they will say, look, I will not reduce it, but I'll give you an extra thing over here or I'll give you an extra mention or something like that. So that's how they, uh, so in India what we do is that we tell them, look I have a station in Bangalore, I will give you free in Mangalore also, another city, another station. But they will not reduce the price. Because if, if you give it once, right, they keep coming back and they say, look that time you are giving me a discount, you should give it, give it to me right now. They would rather want to stick to that particular uh, tariff than, you know, change with it. There's no negotiation for all those things. They make you some value adds. That's how, that, that's the best way of handling business. I think that's how even uh, world over they, they would like to negotiate rather than giving them a discount. So uh, primarily this, uh, you know, lesser in the probably 11 to 5, it is lesser, that the cost is lesser, but at drive time it is really high. Like how we have in television, prime time shows from 7 to 11 in television is prime time shows where everybody is watching television. In radio it is the morning and the evening drive. How many listeners would you expect in the overnight and how many listeners would you expect in the drive time? Um, basically, I, I, can, I can give you a number in India. Uh, usually, some students listen to and a, a lot of people who are working in the call centers. I think you must be aware about a lot of call centers in America are in India. So they are away call because they are working in the American shift. And when it is day over here, they are working. So probably uh, around 2 to 3 lakh, that's around... Uh, 200,000 uh, people, but in a drive time, it's around uh, 2.5 million. 2.5 yeah. million. And cities like uh, Bombay, you know, probably 35, 40, that's around 4.5 million. Yeah. This is just the US station? Yeah. Or every station in general? Every station, yeah. This is around, maybe you can see, nobody listens listen to one station. They keep flipping around. Yeah. So I'm giving you an average. So you're saying a pool of listeners would yeah. be 4.5 million yeah. spread yeah. out the number of stations. Yeah. So, you know, just imagine if I'm listening to a song and the next song is not something that I really like to listen yeah, to. Yeah, no, I understand. I'll switch off, switch off. Yeah. So I'm giving you an aggregate of all the, uh, you know, sta the stations, how it works. And Delhi, it's like, you know, the metros are a little higher on, on the higher side. But uh, cities like Bangalore, Pune, they have something lesser. Is your station on the internet? Yeah. And if so, does that bring in a significant amount of additional listeners? Uh, see, the, the, the thing is, in India, the internet has not reached every nook and corner. There's only probably 7 or 8 percent that the people use the internet. Yeah. And among that, uh, expecting them to listen to radio is quite less. Yeah. So we are still, you know, they have started the initiative. Yeah, but probably. Uh, once the internet, you know, percolates deeper into the country, I'm sure they'll start catching up with, uh, uh, you know, the, the listenership on the internet also. But today, see, uh, I'll tell you how, what kind of listeners we have tapped in on the internet. See, we have got uh, 20, 29 states now, and there are different, different languages in each state. Now, I'm from a city called Bangalore, and my language is Kannada. Okay, and if I move, and I am used to a particular radio jockey, I really love listening to that person. And I, I get a job in Bombay. I start missing him. So I go on to this value value add service where they stream live and I can listen to my station, my, my radio jockey live. So that is the way radio has evolved there, but not completely on the internet. 
basically I don't mind spending for that uh, thing because I can afford it and I, I know I have a technology for it and I know how to use the technology. That is why it is. So uh, that is a, the best. That's the best example I can give you where the internet internet has made a uh, sizable or an evident uh, uh, you know change in the, in the, in the cons in consuming radio in India. Yeah. Basically, it's about language. So uh, I think I have spoken about, okay, the, the parameters, how they come is the band, I told you about morning band. Can you say the other day parts? Uh, see basically the early morning band, uh, probably 5 to 7, yeah. It's people early morning they get up, right, they don't want to listen to something really heavy, they want something very soothing to listen. So at that point of time you can have a, uh, you know, that, that day part is 5 to 7 or 5 to 7.30, you can have something really soothing. Now from 7 to 11.30, right, that is when the people are start deciding the day. Yeah, that is the morning drive. You have to have something really, really exciting to listen to. You know, you have to have something that can stimulate the mind for the entire day. Give them positive things. Say that you know what today the you know the the uh, Nasdaq has risen. You know, the, there are more jobs, so the entire country is feeling good. They're like wow, you know, things are getting better. Those kinds of things. Yeah. So you, you or you give something very thought provoking. You talk about something that's happening in. Uh, you know, the Boko Haram, like we should all work towards that particular, you know, getting the rescue those girls. We have a positive note to that. That is how you stimulate in the early morning, you know, those things. Don't give them very morose news. Yeah, even if you're giving it, you give it in such a way that it is not going to spoil your entire day. Yeah, and then afterwards you can probably dull it down. 11 to 2, you can give any kind of information, probably a little bit more lighter. Because the listenership also is very, you know, people are not uh, putting their mind into that particular station. They just, the background, it's moving. Yeah. But again, when it comes down to the evening, evening, right, L uh, late evening, you you can have something more, uh, you know, interesting, something more fast because you had a bad day, uh, your boss was very rude to you, and you had to go back to your wife or husband, or your child is going to ask for a raise in his, uh, uh, you know, uh, pocket money or what, what do you call uh, allowance. allowance. So you'll be like, dreading all those things and you'll be going back home. So if you look at that, you'd rather have something really more light, and even the music can be very light. So that's how you d divide the content and the music and uh, you know uh, even the style also matters like there are some artists who are very very smart who look very who sound very intelligent in the morning time but in the evening people want somebody really crazy who's, who's always doing something very unpredictable so that style really matters so that particular RJ for that particular style should come and uh, you know uh, host that particular show you can't have a very dull and a sober RJ uh, or an anchor coming and taking the show at Five to nine. You want somebody who's really, uh, you know, high spirited and wants to do something different, unpredictable. That's what I would say. Yeah. Any any questions? Yeah. <coughs> now the uh, the next thing is okay, another important thing while devising your radio. We we look at the radio clocks. Yeah, because. Uh, we take every hour, we say a radio clock has got 60 minutes and we design every hour. Every hour has got certain elements. If you listen to a, any radio station in the world, they will have these few elements in them. And as a radio professional, you have to uh, you know, accommodate time and accommodate content according to these four elements. First and foremost is job talk. That's the anchor speaking. In India, we call it job talk. Yeah, it's the, it's the time that anch anchor speaks. So. Uh, we have to say, you know what, in, in 60 minutes, I'm going to keep probably 10 minutes for speaking. Yeah, and I'll divide that up 3 minutes in every 15, after every 15 minutes. Then I will put in probably uh, music in between. Probably 50, 20, 15 minutes of music. Yeah, we listen to a lot of music uh, on radio. So I'll have 15 minutes of music in 3 breaks. So 45 minutes of music. Yeah, and then comes the most important thing, which we can't negotiate, is the adver advertisements. Because if we don't have advertisements, we can't run the show. So that is the third, um, you know, uh, element of a radio clock. So after these things are done, the fourth and the most, uh, you know, neglected or probably the least, uh, uh, you know, used uh, element is the stationality. This is a very interesting term, uh, you know, that we have coined. The stationality is an uh, is an element on the radio show, which is only for a particular radio station. Now imagine there's some there is a you know something called as Globesville Radio, 99.99. Yeah. Now you have something called as you know some kind of a jingle that is playing. 
Globes will radio. You all listen to radio, you know, Globes, Radio Globes will and 99.9 .9 FM, uh, you know, have a wonderful day, something like that. Uh, that is a stationality and it only plays in your station. That's why it has a, st you know, it, it stays in your station. You can't use that in different stations. Yeah? So you have to, you have to make sure that we have stationalities in your radio station. Because why do we need stationalities? Now, how will I know which station I'm listening to? If I don't know which station I'm listening to, tomorrow when, uh, you know, when, when the research guys, the Arbitron guys come and ask me or they're doing some kind of research, and I would say some station, you know, some globe or some other station, the, that particular station is going to get all the credit for your work. So stationalities, <laughs> there are two important things. First and foremost thing is that it reminds the listener you're listening to that particular station. Second thing, it also brings in a, a kind of a, you know, a whiff of fresh air, something, you know, some interesting jingle or uh, some kind of a promo, something like that. There are, you know, four types of uh, stationalities. First is the station jingle. It's a 30 or a 40 second um, <coughs> musical piece where you listen to, you know, uh, something really interesting and it talks about the radio station. Globes will and gives four or five uh, chorus and some, some kind of a musical element. It always plays in the top of the hour exactly at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So the moment you listen to it, you're like, oh, okay, I'm listening to Globesville Radio. It is very important to have stationality. Otherwise, people will not know which station they're listening to. And then, you know, your competitor may get the advantage for that. The second thing is promos. Your promos are, 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 are radio elements which promote a particular aspect of your radio station. Now, pr promos can be station promos. Uh, it's a 30 second, uh, you, know, you know, what do you say, interactive or a very creative uh, uh, radio piece which uh, promotes the station, talks about the station. Globesville is doing that, Globesville is doing this, Globesville is, uh, you know, getting into uh, different, different things. It's just kind of promoting the radio station. The next thing is a show. In that show, there is, there, you know, there's probably one show by uh, Axie. So Axis, you know, probably we can call it Axis Taxi or something like that, where she's going around the entire uh, New York City. Now that particular promo is promoting her show. That is a, sh a show promo. Then you have an RJ promo where you are promoting the RJ. Now imagine if uh, Herb is an RJ on that. And I will talk about Herb. Like, uh, you know, uh, Herb likes rock and he likes Indian food or he likes Chinese and those kind of things. I'm actually, you know, creating a kind of a relationship between Herb and his listeners. That is the whole idea about the particular promo. And next time when you listen to you, probably you know one of your listeners may come and give, on your birthday, he may come and give you that particular uh, CD of that particular rock uh, album, you know, that, 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 that you like. Or he may come and give you, uh, you know, uh, Chinese food or Indian food. So it helps in having a kind of a very good, uh, uh, what do you say, relationship between, between your listeners. And then you have snippets. Snippet is... Or here, I'm sorry, stands for the radio. Radio yes. jockey, yeah. Yeah? Then you have something called a snippet promo. Snippet promo is the most exciting part of a show, where probably you know, uh, you know, in Herb's show, he he did something really uh, uh, interesting, and everybody who didn't catch it at that point of time, probably you can you can edit that particular part, give it a beginning and an end, and run it throughout the day or probably throughout the week. So everybody's like, wow, Herb's show is amazing. You know what? I think I missed it yesterday. I'm going to listen to it tomorrow. So you give a small snippet of your particular show, and you start, you know, uh, pushing traffic towards that particular RJ show. So you have a snippet. You have a beginning where it which talks about the show. In the end, you talk about the information. Did you miss it today? Then tomorrow evening you can listen to Herb 5 to 9 and enjoy Globesville Radio, whatever. So even if somebody's missed it, they will listen to this particular, uh, that particular RJ, that particular show. Then teaser. Teaser is basically you. It's a 10 seconder where you just tease something, saying that you know what. Uh, uh, th there's something exciting happening tomorrow. You want to know what it is? Come and listen to us tomorrow at that point of time. So it's a kind of a teaser. It just gives you a tease and it gets off. So the excitement is built among people. And later, probably people will all come and listen to that show and then there's, there's a large audience for that particular show. Yeah? The next thing is segue. Segue is a very interesting term. Uh, we use that to keep the, the tempo or the, you know, the, the uh, what do you say? the rhythm of a particular station. Now imagine if I'm playing a fast number, yeah, and I'm playing a fast music, and the next song is, you know, probably a slow music. If I suddenly go into the, from the fast music to the slow music, it has a very jarring effect for us. It's like a 
pothole while you're driving. You imagine you're driving really fast and suddenly there's a huge pothole, you bang into that, you start losing, you, you lose the entire uh, effect of the drive. So what we do, we put small sweepers that segue, it goes and you know, it goes on to that and slowly goes up. So that even if you're enjoying the fast number, it gives you those 5 seconds for your mind to calm down and then slowly it goes to a slow number. So you start enjoying the next song also. It's a basically a 3 to 5 second uh, element on radio which is very essential. Uh, it also helps in making people realize this is the particular radio station. Like they will just say, you are listening to Radio Will Radio and then they will get out of it. And they will be like, oh, okay fine it's Radio Will and then the next number comes. So it helps, sweeper is basically that. Then you have a bumper. Bumper is basically used uh, after advertisement. Sometimes when the advertisements are very cacophonic, it kind of just jars into you. So we put a small three seconder before the advertisements or after the advertisements. So that it gives you a very pleasant experience. Right? These are all the uh, elements of segway. The last thing is a sparkler. A sp what, do you, what do you mean by a sparkler? Something that is uh, you know, very unpredictable. Like if you're playing uh, you know, with, this, with the crackers, a uh, sparkler has got different different colors, you know, very interesting uh, uh, cracker. Now, a sparkler on radio means a segment, you can have a uh, character on radio who comes and talks like probably you know somebody with a uh, laid back southern accent who's very relaxed in life and uh, he's, he comes to New York and he's so uh, you know overwhelmed by the culture of New York and he's like I can't stay over here and he has a take on everything. He's like Times Square is always alive. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. It should be there. You should make it like a, you know, vineyard back in, uh, you know, uh, you know, Louisiana or something that we can just say. And people will over here start laugh, laughing at him. But that is how it is. He's, he brings his own character in that particular, uh, uh, you know, per particular station. Or you can have a cowboy. Yeah, he has his own antiques. So all these different different kind of characters we can come. He, that particular character will be 15 to 20 seconds. Yeah, it can just come and. You know, add a very different element to a particular radio station. I'll give you an example. Back in India, we have something called as uh, uh, you know, there's, some, there's something that we used to do called Climax Kodanda. It's a it's a, it's a radio mirchi product where I used to where um, uh, you know one of my RJ called Avinash. Uh, we used to have this. There, there is one guy who's a fake script writer. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, okay. Sorry. Fine. He was fake. Uh, he's a fake script writer. What he does is that he always looks into latest movies, the movies that have been released recently, steals the story and just changes the climax. In the beginning, we'll all be wondering, hey, I've heard this somewhere. But in the end, he gives a very interesting twist to it. And it actually, you know, puts us, you know, splits us into laughter. So it's a very interesting to listen to on radio. The same old jock talk, the same old music. Sometimes we get bored. We need a sparkle in life, something really unpredictable. Dogs so, beat Yeah, probably we can have something like that, you know. Doug can probably come and uh, do he can give news in, in beatboxing style. You know, that's a very good sparkler. Yeah? And you can get paid, you know, they get paid really well. No, yeah. Yeah. I think you should be not a goal, so not yet. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not interested in money. Not interested in money, alright. Thanks for hiring that out for me. It's all the art of it. No, but seriously I'm telling you, I think there's a lot of money in that. You can give away news, probably take a news and give a very interesting twist to it in a beatboxing style and people will like, you know, love it. I'll tell you, uh, there is one RJ called RJ Navid in, uh, in Radio Mirchi in Delhi. He plays this, uh, you know, he like, like how you have got punked in, in, in the US. Yeah. He's, he's something called as Murga. Okay. Murga means you make fun of that people. You play chicken. Yeah, you make fun of that, uh, you know, you, you, take the, you, took, you take that trip or make fun of it. That plays at around 7.30 in Delhi. And all the all the cars, all the radio stations tune into Radio Mirchi and they listen to Navid's Murga. He's very popular in, uh, you know, in, in Delhi. Yeah, so that is, you know, that's, a, that's an element that's a spotlight everybody loves to listen to. In Bangalore, we have something called as Lingo Leela. 7, 10, everybody would listen to Radio, radio City. So, uh, you know, the entire city stops and listens to that particular uh, thing. So it can be, it can be sold also. There's one more thing called Ganta Singh in um, Radio One. So there are different different sparklers all across. Uh, you, know. you can you can you can. That also can be sold for money also. So syndicated, so the same guy is on yeah. a lot of stations. A lot of stations. Doug, <coughs> you, uh, uh, hey, you got money, man. <laughs> yeah. Somebody can sponsor that and you say this Doug's beatboxing style bought to you by Pepsi or something like that. Cool. 
probably uh, we can improvise on that. So I think these are the uh, these are the uh, you know uh, elements of radio clocks. All these four elements are to be used judiciously in a radio clock every hour. We sit and do for 24 24 hours for the entire week. We go very specific every minute. Give give it time and then we uh, you know uh, like it's like a timetable. Yeah, and then we put in the software. The, the different in India, we use the RCS software, radio computing software, and uh, we do it every Thursday. And the, the next week, it generates the entire the clocks for the next uh, the next week. And that's how it works. So these are the things that we need to keep in mind as a radio profession. Is there one thing to stationality? And engineering is also another function of stationality. Like if you tune the radio dial in New York, you land on a station, you know what the station is just by the way it sounds, by the way the reverb is processed by the microphones. We have a new station where they have teletype in the background, yeah. make believe sound. And it's almost each station, each station now just relies on an identity and a personality, a stationality by the way it sounds, so you don't even have to listen because they figure you're going to be off of it quick enough. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another uh, use of uh, stationality. Any questions? I think. Uh, you. you know, it has some. The, the, the radio clock uh, business has a, 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 um, a connection to what we're trying to do with Globesville as well, because we, you know, we will be. Uh, we have individual shows, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them are going to resemble, you know, kind of radio shifts. And in that case, these are things that we're talking about, uh, you know, have, you know uh, snippets, teasers, uh, yeah. bumpers, and, uh, uh, and so forth. And so, thank you very much. It, it, it does, it does, uh, it does hit specifically yeah. what we're trying to do with the, the, you know, the, the non-radio, exactly. Well, I remember that day, I guess, Donnie was, after the live show, you were talking about the fillers, right? These things are just like fillers in the... Oh, the fillers between yeah, the live yeah. shows that we yeah, had. Yeah, you mm -hmm. were talking about that. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we even use stationarity when we have no ads. Like, you know, uh, imagine that this is month of June, July. We don't have too many advertisements. Usually they have a 12 minutes advertisement limit. And you have only 8 minutes of advertisements. So there is extra 4 minutes. So probably either you can increase the song of 3 minutes. Still you have one more minute left. So maybe you can have a sparkler too. If they also end up as filler. Mm -hmm. So it works, you know. It, it, that's what. If you understand these things very well, right, you will know how to run a station effectively, rather than just getting in and you know doing stuff what everybody does. If you get these things right, you'll know how to manage your time, manage the clocks, manage the clients. All these things become a part of your, uh, you know, uh, your radio life. So these are the basic things that I teach in most of my classes. Uh, these are the most important. Thing. I've chosen the most uh, important things that is neglected all around. I went through a lot of books uh, written by American authors. Even they have not mentioned about these things. That's why I've, there's a lot of other things, but I've chosen these element, these things. Uh, then I have come up with this particular, uh, you know, session for for uh, you guys and anyone who's watching this on, uh, you know, Globes will. Yeah. It's, it's it's kind of off topic, but just out of my yeah. curiosity, do you um, for Indian uh, radio program? Do you still do like stories, like serial stories? Because uh, I know in really some underdeveloped it. countries and some underdeveloped areas um, in the Middle East, a lot of their entertainment comes from radio, not necessarily TV. Yeah. Yeah. So is that something you still do in India? Okay, see, uh, I will give you a little bit, uh, the answer is going to be a little longer because there's a different culture of radio there. Mm -hmm. We have two kinds of radio scenarios there. One is the government owned, it's called All India Radio. The other one is the private FM stations. Now the private FM stations are primarily into making money. Now they will not do this kind of uh, shows because there's no money in that. Nobody wants to advertise in that, and they lose business. They try. In fact, um, uh, you know, in the next session that I'm talking about Indian media. There's something called as this soap operas. They're crazy about soap operas. They tried doing this uh, thing, thing called Kyuki Sasbi Bahuti, one of the most popular soap operas in India. It went on for almost a decade. Yeah, and it was a top-rated show in India. They actually put that on radio. It became a big flop. It did not work out. But this, like the government-owned stations, kind of like they how, do it. yeah, yeah, yeah and they do it, and they, yeah, and the um, the less fortunate people, I guess, yeah, they can say that they're the ones that can they're listen the ones to it. Sort of, sort of like our PBS. 
you yeah. want to think of it that way, or like NPR and PBS. Exactly, those things. Uh, but you know, the thing is that their production quality is not that good. So it, yeah. sometimes, you know, anyone listening to it, they just get put off and they'd rather go and switch off and listen to a you know, private FM station. Uh, see, in India, it's, I was... I'm sorry, I was just, I was just interested in that. I, uh, I was just interested in that, you know. Yeah, I know it's that doesn't really pertain to here, so I'm sorry. No, but, that, but it's okay. It's uh, relevant to Indian uh, radio industry. What I would say that Indian radio industry is uh, had, had a very stunted growth. <coughs> yeah, it's it ha you know you won't believe it. In 2000, we had the first private FM station, and and all over the world we have so many other stations. In uh, you know there are only 700 radio stations in in, in a country like India. Whereas a small country, a small island like Sri Lanka has got more than 3,000 stations. There's some kind of a uh, political game going on where they don't want to give too much of attention to radio. But I think the new government led by you know, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi should probably release radio because radio is very empowering. And for a country like India, we need radio more than any other medium. Because the most important thing is that we don't need to be literate to listen to radio. And India has a it's easy. Problem. It's easier accessible, yeah. and probably you can also, you know, uh, help them in um, improving the standard of living, hygiene. We have all these problems mm -hmm. there. Of course, the world outside knows about Bangalore, Mumbai, and Delhi, or called Calcutta. Yeah, but there are a lot of other places where a lot of attention has to be given. And I think radio can make a big difference. Uh, there's another interesting thing you want to know. We don't. We're not allowed to air news in private FM stations. It's kind of weird. But uh, I had uh, presented a paper on that last time when I had come to the you know I come to the US. Uh, I presented a paper on the restrictions of uh, uh, you know playing news in private FM stations. It's very interesting. Uh, there's always just nonsense going on radio. You know, we're making fun of uh, each other, we're talking some nonsense. There's no news. Only in private, uh, only in government stations, you have uh, news. So I had done the research on that, and uh, there's a conference in University of Oregon. So there I mentioned how you know. Uh, from, from you know successive governments, they kept avoiding giving radio that kind of importance that it deserves. Mm -hmm. so that is something. Does the government control what uh, is uh, yeah. is news? <laughs> so yeah, it's only by all India Radio. Uh, so it's a censorship, basically, but it, uh, in a sense. In a sense, yeah. And see, the moment it is government owned, they only talk pro government. They will never talk what exactly is going wrong. And uh, private FM stations are not being given. They're giving really you know silly excuses saying that we can't monitor them, we can't monitor this. But there are so many television channels who are doing all kinds of nonsense and they get away with it. So I think they should uh, come up with a better excuse, I would rather say. But I think the new government is going to make the difference. I think things will change. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm, uh, I, uh, I also want to put one more thing. I always feel radio is a very spiritual channel, spiritual medium. Because it's always in the present moment. It's always right now. Television, all other things, they're deferred life. But radio is the most closest to reality. So I always call radio as a spiritual medium. And I think we need radio to soothe a lot of things. It really helps in reaching out to people. Like I said, theater of the mind, more impactful. You, you uh, are you familiar with the Fireside Theater? Oh, oh sorry. It's all right, we'll get you a new one. I'll reconnect it. The Fireside Theater, it was in the 1960s. Herbert knows that. They were a theater of the mind where they did radio theater, but they started actually doing radio theater for commercials. Okay. Where there would be different characters, and then they took that. Uh, and they made, uh, you know, albums. But they, they were from radio, but they were really very, very um, advanced um, uh, satirists. Okay. Satire. And uh, they, if you ever get a chance. Sure. Fireside Theater. Uh, I'm right. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's fabulous. I think it's, I love it. Yeah. The, the most accessible one is, uh, <coughs> which album is, uh, is uh, Nick Danger on? Well, now Mark's London. All hail Marx and Lenin. Okay. But Which is Groucho Marx and John Lennon. Can you write that down for me? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. And um, uh, the, the Further Adventures of Nick Danger is a, what amounts to a, a film noir, but it's on the radio. 
So and they you know they all play the same parts. It's, you, 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 it's references to things like that. It just it, it, it's, it's very well done. Like you you know just getting you know the feel of the mind. Sure. Like that. I think there's also a very interesting case today of the War of the Words, right? Uh, yeah, sure. I think when uh, that was uh, played, uh, the right. entire country thought the Mars had actually invaded uh, uh, this thing and people went uh, crazy. Yeah. Or, or Orson Welles. Sure, no? It was the... Yeah, the late 30s, so there yeah. was no... You know, the people, people did not people, know that. People didn't know what Orson Welles was going on. So, uh, Okay. Any other questions? Are you on the air in uh, India? Uh, no, basically no. now I've gotten into teaching uh, full time. So. What could a uh, radio personality expect to make in India? In the sense of a uh, salary range of fifty thousand a year, a hundred thousand a year. What in dollars? Do they have superstars. How much? How much yeah. the Okay. Uh, look. A radio jockey, I think the highest paid radio jockey is getting around uh, 5 lakhs per month. 5 lakhs is... Uh, uh, that's around uh, 10,000 dollars? Yeah. 8,000, almost 9,000 dollars. 9,000 dollars, yeah. <coughs> I think uh, the ones in Bombay and Delhi get that much money. Yeah, and of course, you know, like, when you become an RJ, you have other jobs also. You can be an MC. All the top RJs, they also MC big events. Yeah. Like uh, you know, a rock concert, those kinds. So you you make a lot of money in that. Way. So it's more about the popularity than, yeah. and there are a lot of people following them. So it's see, radio in India is still in a very <coughs> nascent stages. They haven't yet realized the potential. It's more or less about uh, what do you say, attraction. They haven't got the seriousness of that. Once they get to get to that level, I think things will change. It's now more or less about uh, fame and popularity. But uh, in cities like Bangalore, I think somebody is getting around the three. That would be around uh, five thousand dollars per month. Down your foot. My foot stuck in your. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, 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 it's not going back. Oh, okay. Yeah, because in America, you have some radio jockeys that are. Right now. <laughs> I know. Wow. You're driving the foot. <laughs> in, in America, a big trend in radio stations is uh, syndication and automation. Yeah. That the program just comes in in satellite. No one operates the station. The news is automatic. Yeah. The, it just, they have four stations nearby here, and if they run unattended, there's not one person who works to keep four stations on the air. Um, is that a similar trend in India? Uh, or is everything local origination? You know, it's actually interesting. I was talking about, uh, I, I think you just missed out a couple of points. I just repeat that. We don't have news in India. Radio does not play news. Only the government owned stations can play. Uh, then uh, that means that we only have some kind of uh, you know, very light infotainment content. We have very uh, you know, weird rules for radio. And the first private radio stations station came up only a decade and a half ago, in 2000. It was always government owned. So there are a lot of restrictions for radio. It's a basically a political uh, no, uh, conspiracy, I feel, by the previous governments. Uh, another thing, what they've put in uh, thing is that they can't syndicate their site. So because, uh, see, in cities like Bangalore, uh, the closest city is called Mysore. Yeah, we did go and approach them, saying, why don't we syndicate the content we put there? They said no, not supposed to do that. It's ridiculous. I think probably the information broadcasting ministry are not really understanding the problems of uh, radio. The other problem is that the license fee is too high. Here I heard in America with fifty dollars you can start a radio station. In India you can't even buy ten seconds of advertisements. It's kind of really different. And the last thing is that the royalty that we pay for music eats up into our major revenues. It's in in, in America and all over the world you have to share you have to give a share of two percent of your revenues. Yeah, whatever revenue you make only two percent goes to the royalties. Yeah, but in India they have a you know a minimum uh, tariff. You have to pay even if you're under loss. That's really bad rules. That's a draconian law for radio because if you don't make money, you still have to give them. A lot of stations in India are running under loss, but because they're run by big media houses, they're doing it because of their name and their brand. They're running it. I think probably I think Mirchi is the only profitable radio station in in India. The others are they're in deep shit. It's really difficult. I don't know how they're going to manage, but. That's about it.
this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for Global, it looks like it's uh, about lunch time. So, uh, our lunch, come back at 2, and we'll uh, talk a little bit about outreach. Okay? Can you flip the board back? No, we'll use this side of the board. Well, one, one side for one, one side for one. I was telling Sandra all about what we were talking about, like what is Global. She's still in here all the time. She's not in this class. Don't bust her trap. She's not going to come back. <laughs> so you. So this is the the oh, okay. You Donnie. should go get her lunch now. Donnie. 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 Donnie.